Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, Nigerian Army announces commencement of third phase of the operation to eliminate banditry and insurgency in the northeast and northwest, tagged Harbin Kunama. Vice President Oshibajo inspects second Niger Bridge for state's resolve of government to complete the project before the end of President Buhari's second tenure. EFCC arrests 37 people allegedly involved in internet fraud in Oweri, the Imo state capital, claims suspects were living lavishly, no means of livelihood. And at least two people killed as Cyclone Fani makes landfall in India, one of the most severe storms to hit the region in recent years. On business news tonight, South African telecom giants, MTN Group, appoints former Central Bank Governor and Emir of Kano, Mohamed Yusufi II, into its global board ahead of its Nigerian subsidiaries listing on the stock exchange in July. On sports news tonight, Unilag Staff School, Mind Builders and African Church Primary School impressed on day two of the Lagos preliminaries of the Channel's International Kids Cup. And from Abuja, federal government affirms commitment to curbing occurrences of building collapse in the country as interministerial committees set up to study issue submits report. The Nigerian Army has announced the commencement of the third phase of the operation to wipe out banditry and insurgency in the northeast and northwestern regions of the country in an operation dubbed Harbin Kunama. At a briefing in Abuja, the Chief of Training and Operations, Major General Lamidi Adeoshung, said the Army is currently in the final stages of triumph over the bandits in states such as Zamfara and Nasarawa. He, however, noted that fleeing bandits have resorted to carrying out attacks on civilian targets in surrounding settlements. According to him, the third phase of the operation, which translates as Scorpion Sting in English, will tackle the fleeing bandits and other forms of crime and criminality in the area. It has, however, been observed that there appear to be a resurgence of their activities in other contiguous states to Sanfara. This is occasioned by fleeing bandits that have resorted to attacking soft targets while relocating to other safe havens within contiguous states of Katsina and Sokoto. Current threat assessments revealed the migration of the bandits from their epicenter to other areas in Kaduna, Kano, and Niger states. It is against this backdrop that exercise Arvin Kunama 3 is being reorganized and its mandate expanded to effectively ensure the complete defeat of the fleeing bandits. This is to restore public confidence and enhance safety while also ensuring socioeconomic ac activities continue without fear or intimidation. It is on this premise that I want to plead with the general public to persevere in the face of seeming inconveniences due to restrictions that may be imposed in these areas while the Nigerian army is conducting the exercise. Before inspecting the second Niger Bridge, the Vice President Yemi Shibajo today flagged off the federal government's trader money scheme in Anambra State. Professor Shibajo was accompanied by the Governor Willie Obiano when he visited Ekeoka Market in Oka, the state capital, where the trader money scheme took off. He also visited the Ochanja Market in Onisha, the state's commercial nerve center, and on both visits interacted directly with market men and women, explaining the government's plan to alleviate their suffering through the scheme. Professor Shibajo had earlier visited the palace of the Obi of Onisha, where he met with traditional leaders in the state. Trading value 
many of them are not giving any facilities or loans because nobody is sure whether they pay back or not. Only the government can guarantee that kind of facility. And it is the bank of industry that actually administers the law. So the various things have done practically all around the country. Uh, launching the bigger industry. Already in Anambra State, about 20,000 or people are trained and have received the data. Still in the southeast, 37 suspects alleged to have been involved in internet fraud have been arrested in Oweri by the Southeast Zonal Office of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the ERCC. The arrest followed a raid on some targeted residents in the area, some areas in Imo State Capital, following intelligence reports which revealed the suspects were living lavish lifestyles without any known means of livelihood. The ERCC explained in a statement that the suspects specialized in defrauding unsuspecting victims via the internet. Items which included laptop computers, 25 exotic cars and expensive mobile phones were recovered from the suspects. The autograph body further says the exercise is in line with the commission's mandate and decry the higher rate of cybercrime in the zone, which is blamed on the erosion and breakdown of values in the society. It adds that the arrested individuals will be charged to court as soon as investigations into the matter are concluded. Another act of fraud has been penalized by the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja, which today nullified the election of Mr. Abdurraouf Modibo into the House of Representatives for Adamawa State. Mr. Modibo was declared winner of the All Progressives Congress primaries held on October 7, 2018 in Yola and later won the 2019 general election. However, his closest challenger, Mr. Mustafa Usman, filed a suit alleging that Modibo falsified his age and was not eligible to contest the APC primaries. Delivering judgment on the suit, Justice Iyang Ekwo declared that the plaintiff had successfully proven beyond reasonable doubt that Mr. Modibo falsified his age severally and submitted the same to INEC in order to contest the elections. Justice Ekwo also held that Mr. Modibo was a serving National Youth Corps member when he contested the primary, an action that contravenes the NYSE Act 2004. The judgment is a sound one and constitutional and very reasonable. Somebody who has breached the constitution, who has breached the law of the land, cannot go, cannot make law for the goodness of this country. So therefore, the first defendant is not a candidate, cannot be a candidate of APC for that election. And the court has rightly decided that the plaintiff is the rightful candidate of the APC. We have more now on the vice president's visit to the Niger Bridge uh, during the inspector inspection of the Asaba end of the 11.59 kilometer bridge. The vice president noted that the successful completion of the structure is paramount because it will boost not only the economy of the southeast but that of the entire country. Our correspondent, Gloria Umizuke, reports. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, arrives on Icha Anambra State, heading straight to the palace of the Obiyo Vinicha, His Majesty Igwe Alfred Achebe. The ongoing construction of the second Niger Bridge is another area of focus for the Vice President. This is the first time he will be inspecting the site since work began. Flanked by the Minister of Power, Works and Housing and the State Governor, the Vice President took time to get details as he walked the entire stretch of the road on an inspection tour of the six-lane bridge under construction. The Vice President equates the length of the foundation of the 11.59 kilometer bridge to an 18-story building. So far, the state government confirmed that the federal government has released 30 billion naira out of the 206 billion naira earmarked for the project, which is expected to complement the first Niger Bridge constructed in the 60s. The uh, second Niger Bridge is so important for the economy of the Southeast and for the Nigerian economy. 
uh, and of course it's not just the bridge, there are also the access roads, you know, and the access roads are all, of course very important also in, 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 in uh, not only feeding the bridge but also uh, ensuring smooth, uh, smooth we are going around as you go around the whole, uh, the whole of this zone. But importantly, even here, you know, we have a very large number of engineers working here. There have been revisions from the area costs, and uh, there are also costs that have come up from compensation and so many other things. And there's still a final link road 2A to link the, I think it's by 11 kilometers that needs to be added to this, that is still a broken. The second Niger Bridge, which is expected to operate on a tolling system upon completion, will also connect millions of Nigerians across the Federation to resources that can change their lives for good. From Bonicha, Anambra State, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Outside Nigeria, as the Nigerian community in South Africa's Western Cape province await an autopsy to be carried out following the death of a Nigerian in Cape Town, they insist that an independence expert be part of the process. 28-year-old Ebuka Udubu died in police custody on May Day, and the police claim he hung himself in the holding cell, a claim the Nigerian community does not accept. May the 1st, 2019, went horribly wrong for 28-year-old Ibuka Odobo, a cosmetics trader. According to eyewitnesses, a domestic dispute with a South African female partner led to the involvement of the police. He was allegedly arrested, beaten and confirmed dead in a holding cell three hours later. The Nigerian community in the Western Cape is not buying the suicide story told by the police. Very uh, inconsistent. It has a cost, the, the, the death cost is still not telling. We met with the police attendant. They said incidences like this are not in their hands. That is the IPID um, that will do everything. This is the type of situation our mission needs to really, really, really follow up. Nigeria's Consul General in South Africa, Mr. Godwin Adama, says the mission is also not at ease with the story and intends to dig further. I've advised the community leaders to ensure that they organize themselves to, to see that this matter does not just die like that. At our own end, we will get all the details and make the necessary official protest to the relevant authorities. Okay. And we believe that this matter will not just go like that because it involves an instrument of the state. Okay. According to the police watchdog, the Independent Police Investigative Directorate, IPID, an inquest docket has been opened on what is yet another death of a Nigerian in the hands of police in South Africa. I do understand that there are some outstanding uh, meetings, bilateral meetings, that the High Commissioner uh, in the last time we agreed that that was going to we are going to meet at separate levels like the Minister of Police Affairs and then the Foreign Affairs to be able to discuss in detail some of these issues and we are still awaiting that particular meeting. The autopsy is expected to take place soon and the Nigerian community in the Western Cape is insisting that an independent pathologist be part of this process. Hopefully, a lack of funding and a dearth of eyewitnesses coming forward, which has hampered such efforts to solve similar cases in the past, will not be the case this time. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. In part two after the break, former head of state in stable condition after reportedly slumping at the burial in Delta State. Please stay with us.